So we've been following a study into wheel size in cross-country mountain biking. If you haven't already seen the first video, click the link. Um, but if you have, I'm sure you wait to see the results. So there is a winner and it's the 29er. But as often with these things, it's not quite as simple as that. So we sat down with Dr. Howard Hurst to discuss the results in more detail. So, it's first things first, which bike out of the three was the fastest? If you look at it in scientific terms, then there was no difference whatsoever between 26, 27 and a half and the 29 inch wheel bikes. But if you look at it in practical terms, then the 29 inch was clearly faster. So over the course that we use, which is a three, roughly a three and a half kilometer course, quite undulating, quite twisty, 29er was around 12 seconds quicker than the 26, but it was nearly 19 seconds faster than the 27.5 inch wheel. So yeah, overall a 29 is faster. And if you try and extrapolate that out to a multi-lap race, then that difference is only going to get bigger. That's the numbers. The numbers are fairly similar, but the real world time in time, it's kind of, it's faster. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the data from the power and the cadence and the times are different. But if you then put that into a statistical software package and look at whether there is a, a mathematical difference between them, no, there isn't. But mathematical differences don't translate into real world differences. And, and quite often we'll, we'll see from, from different studies, there's no significant difference yet the practical differences can be quite big. So in this case, that's, that's a classic example because there's no statistical differences, but real world differences, clearly a 19 second advantage as real world implications for race performance. It's quite interesting there as well that the 26 was quicker than the 27 and a half. So the slowest bike of the three in this test was the, apparently the middle yeah. size. Yeah, the 27 and a half. Um, maybe it isn't the best of both worlds that a lot of manufacturers are claiming. To be fair, uh, I'd have to say there's an element, there may have been an element of unfamiliarity there uh, from the yeah. riders, all of the ones that we tested. They had experience of 26 and 29 inch bikes. Um, none of them had ridden a, a 27 uh, and a half inch wheel bike before. So that might have played uh, a factor in the results to a certain extent, but they're all competent climbers, all competent descenders, so that might have been relatively negligible. Of the of the three, was the, did the 29er stand out on the, was it kind of the climbs where it was a lot faster, or was it just kind of an all-round, was there any particular area where it seemed to be the best? We split the course uh, into the, the courses overall, and then we identified one main climb, uh, one main descent. On that climb, it was only marginally quicker than the 26, but it was 10 seconds faster over nearly 400 metres than the 27 and a half. Right. The big difference was the 29er was faster, but for less effort. So again, if you stretch that out to a, a, long, a much longer climb, a couple of kilometers, then potentially you've got a, a huge energy saving advantage there, yeah. which come towards the end of a race, that's gonna be significant. Was there anywhere that the 26 excelled more than the other bikes? Because a lot of people say now, 26 is dead, they're finished. Is that true? If you look at the descent in isolation, then the 26 was the quickest. If you look at the, 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 the course as a whole, then the 29er was the quickest. So I think this idea that's been perpetuated by the media that the 26 is dead, I'd have to disagree with, because based on our results, it was the second fastest. The 27 and a half was actually the slowest. Um, but I guess to some extent it's horses for courses. I mean, if you look at it for enduro, uh, for example, what would I use personally? I'd probably go on a 29er based on the results from this study because it excelled in all areas. It was the quickest overall, it was quickest on the climbs and it was only marginally slower um, than the 26. I think it was about, I think it was about five seconds slower than the, the 26 on the descents. So if you've got an enduro race which has a, a significant contribution of climbing or 
relatively uh, technical claps, then I would go with the 29. If the race is uh, much more downhill, rocky oriented, then I will probably go with the 27 and a half. I think everybody wants to find that one bike that does all. And unfortunately, based on our results, I don't think that exists. That said, in trained hands, statistically, as I said at the start, any one of the three wheel sizes is as effective as each other. So, so it's the rider. I think it's not the bike. To a large extent, yeah. yeah. So I've got no excuses. That's, that's There's the, no excuses. Right. As, as you were saying earlier, we saw in the, the Olympics back in 2012 that it was a kind of good spread of bikes in the top three. There was three different types of bikes and riders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that we did from the results uh, of this study was look to see whether there was a relationship between wheel size and, and rider height. Um, and there's certainly been a, a lot of play about that in magazines that 29 is favour a taller rider, whereas 26 favours a shorter rider. Um, again, we found no evidence for that. There was no significant relationships there between rider height and wheel size. Uh, we had riders from around five foot five tall to six foot two. And again, they all put in very comparable times uh, across all three wheel sizes. So if you're comfortable on it and you're a skilled rider, you're gonna do well. So we also had the really cool, interesting muscle firing sensors, arms, legs, thighs, etc. Was there anything you found out from that that was a significant difference with all the wheel sizes? Again, um, if you look at the lap as a whole, uh, in fact, if you look at the laps, the isolated climb and descent, there's no differences whatsoever, apart from, for example, between the legs and the arms, which kind of expected anyway. The only difference that we found was with the 26 inch wheel, um, there was no significant difference between the biceps and the triceps during the descents. So potentially that, that indicates that riders were having to manoeuvre the bike, the 26 inch wheel more uh, and put greater upper body input into getting the front wheel over obstacles during those descents. So again, um, if you stretch that out over a longer descent or a rockier descent, then you might be at a slight disadvantage from um, muscle activity. Performance wise, we didn't see a difference in time. The, the 26 was the quickest, but in terms of energy expenditure, because the riders were having to pull up more and work with the biceps more, that might lead to greater fatigue over a longer descent. So, over a race, yeah. Yeah, so for yeah. an enduro race maybe. The 27 may prove to be an advantage there because you've got lesser upper body activity. Yeah. So even though the 26 was quicker, yeah, you're putting more. You're basically putting more effort to keep that. Yeah. It required more effort yeah. to uh, yeah. maintain that speed. In terms of is it marketing hype and, and, and propaganda? I, I, I can't really comment on that because I don't work in the industry. If you're looking at it from a performance perspective, then as we've already said, there's, there's no real difference, okay? Apart from time, which is the ultimate um, factor in, in racing, there is a slight difference in, in, in the 29 of being quicker, but I think it's just more choice. Um, and choice is not a bad thing. It is, to a large extent, boils down to personal preference. We've seen that in the riders that we tested, they were all as competent on each of the three bikes. So, I guess it depends what you feel comfortable on. So I guess one final question, if you're going to go out and do an XC race next weekend, which bike would you be on? If I had to choose, I would probably choose a 29er. Because certainly from the results from this study, it did excel in all areas overall during the climbs. And there was not too much of a trade-off in the descents either. Cool, brilliant. So there you go, Nino Scherter, you've got it all wrong. Sort it out. <laughs> Can't think of anything else. <laughs> so the study was really interesting to take part in. I was genuinely surprised that the 27.5 was the slowest. That, that wasn't what I expected. And I was equally impressed how close the 26 was to the other two bikes. The key thing for me was that the 29er climbed faster for less power. If you're racing XC, that's the gold standard of performance. But 
obviously everyone's different and it's about what works best for you. There's more wheel size standards, axle standards on the way, so things are only going to get more confusing. The important thing to remember is to keep an open mind, try a few different things before buying your bike.